morning. Today, millions of Americans can take heart. Employment has, unemployment has finally started down. This dip in unemployment coming just after the word of higher retail sales, higher auto sales, and there's one more sign that America's on the mend. Confidence is returning and with reason, and while we may see some ups and downs on the way to recovery, we're on the move now, and that's our best hope for more productive, lasting jobs. According to our own very cautious forecast, economic recovery will create more than four and a half million new jobs by the end of 1984. If the Congress cooperates, if it holds the line on spending, we can enjoy strong, sustained growth without triggering a return to the double-digit inflation and soaring interest rates that caused unemployment to rise and nearly destroyed our economy. Chris? Mr. President, Labor Department officials point out that there was a big seasonal adjustment in January, and also, of course, the military was included in the employment figures for the first time in January. Don't both of those factors exaggerate the improvement in the January unemployment? No, because, Chris, first of all, the figures that they give are the seasonally adjusted. And most of the time, I've always, I've questioned and said, you know, explain that to me, because most of the time, the unadjusted figures show more people employed. Uh, but they've used this. But with regard to the military, they gave two sets of figures. They have just started to include the military uh, as employed, those serving in the United States only. This is only simple justice because every time someone left the service and didn't have a job, they automatically counted them as unemployed. But they are using two sets of figures. If you include the military, that set of figures is unemployment was only 10.7, and it went down to 10.2 instead of 10.4. So they're relatively the same. If I may follow up, sir, uh, given the good news about unemployment in January, will you still consider the acceleration of government construction projects as some kind of jobs program? Well, we're looking at that and have been looking at that. That is already, those are things that are in the budget in which various agencies and departments and the Veterans Administration have got things that need doing. And what we're looking at is to see if we can accelerate uh, the start of those and, and move them up, and it wouldn't make any budget change. Mr. President, would you look with favor on accelerating some of those construction projects, even if it meant increasing the budget, perhaps by a... Uh, uh, okaying construction projects that were scheduled to take place in later years? Well, we might look at them, but we, we would look at them always with the, the idea that our greatest goal must be to hold this line on deficits in order to reassure the money markets out there that uh, we do intend to hold the line and that they can look forward to continued recovery. and One thing concerned me, you said unemployment has finally started down. Does that mean that you think that over, say, the next two years, unemployment won't come back up, touching the 11 percent mark? Do you think this is a trend downward or just a dip? I think it is a trend. I do think this. If you look at past recessions, you'll see that there's been a vol volatility to the unemployment figures. Now, that doesn't mean that they come up higher than the highest point. But, for example, there may be a month where it might uh, level off or come up, say, a little above the 10.4. I don't think that you will see it come up above the high mark of 10.8. Uh, now, I, you, and then Mr. I'll get President, you. President, er early this week in St. Louis, you said quite emphatically that there would be no give on the third year of the tax cut and on indexation the following year. Yet your spokesmen, including the Treasury Secretary, have been hinting in public otherwise that there might be some give. Which is it going to be? I think the worst thing in the world we could do, and particularly with recovery started now, is to do anything that would smack of a tax increase as those wouldn't to take away uh, those two parts of the economic program. And uh, I just feel very determined well, about that. Up, Why uh, have Bill your spokesman been hinting uh, otherwise? Well, I haven't heard exactly the remarks, and uh, since I've come back, we haven't had a chance for any conversations about that. Uh, maybe they're uh, trying to indicate what I did in the uh, State of the Union address, that uh, there is a certain flexibility with regard to wanting to have a bipartisan uh, uh,
program here to go forward together as we did on the Social Security program. Bill? Mr. President, with the consensus now on both sides of the aisle up on Capitol Hill, will you commit to some kind of jobs program and will you commit to one that contains what your own people are calling humanitarian aid for the unemployed? Well, let me point something out they seem to be ignoring. First of all, the uh, basic employment and training program, the Act of 1983, is providing $5 billion, uh, job training and so forth, for almost uh, or about 3 million Americans. Uh, that's in the, the fiscal 83 year. But there is already $93 billion in the 84 budget for that very fact, for the unemployed, the needy, and so forth. So we've got quite a big budgeted amount uh, in this and programs and ideas aimed at at job training to meet this structural problem because there are many unemployed people who will not be going back to the same jobs they had. Those jobs will no longer exist. And we're prepared to do something about that. Sir, if I may follow up, uh, there's a great deal of pressure from both Republicans and Democrats to do something visible and to do it soon, beyond what's already in your budget proposal. Will you? Well, they were talking about that before they'd seen what was in the budget proposal. I had an argument the other day with someone who, who uh, was talking about the very things that I was finally able, when I got a word in, to say it's in the budget already. And uh, we, we're certainly going to, to listen to what is suggested in relation to what is already proposed. And as I say, we want to, we want to go forward in a bipartisan manner. Mr. President, on humanitarian aid, do you intend to provide any help at all for those people who have no food or not enough of it and those people who have no homes? We certainly are doing everything that we can in that regard. And there are programs that have been in place over the years for that very problem. Those people uh, are automatically eligible for the programs that, that are in place. Uh, and we, we intend to continue that. No. The, uh, Mr. President, could you give us your own reaction to the uh, half dozen incidents that have occurred between our Marines and the Israelis in Lebanon? And could you also uh, respond to this growing feeling that the Marines are in there for a longer stay than we initially thought? Some people are now talking about the possibility that the Marines may be there for another year. I can't set any time limit on it. We're trying to expedite the departure from Lebanon of all the foreign forces in there. Uh, these incidents are the type of thing that, that can happen and, it, and they, the best answer to them is for the Israelis, the Syrians, and what remnants of the PLO are there are to go back beyond their own borders. The multinational forces were put in there at the request of the Lebanese government while they tried to establish stability uh, in their own country. And this is, is evidence of it. The fact that um, where the multinational forces are carrying out their, uh, their purpose, uh, these repeated efforts to uh, go through their lines and do what has been agreed that they will not do. And uh, I think that I think our forces are behaving very well. Sam? Sir, I'd like to follow up on that. Did the Marine captain do the right thing? Were the Israelis trying to penetrate a place where they should not have? And I guess more importantly, do we now have assurances from Israel that it won't happen again? We do have such assurances, and I must say that, yes, the same uh, unit and the same commander had tried three times uh, at this same point. And uh, in my view, the Marine officer did the only thing that he could do. Uh, Mr. President, can you tell us, with the trucking strike having increased violence, whether you agree with Senator McClure, who now wants to repeal the user fees that uh, would go into effect in 84 and 85 and that have upset the independent truckers. Do you, would you support that or would you let Congress repeal those user fees? I have to say that to allow a very tiny percentage of the truckers, the trucking union is opposed uh, to what they're doing. Uh, about 80% of the independent truckers are not observing this strike. Uh, some of them have been intimidated and frightened off the road, and you can understand that with the violence that's taken place. But to let a small percentage of any group of people in our country, by the use of murder and violence of the kind that they've used, change the laws of this country would be the worst precedent that we could set. There, how could there be any law and order 
uh, from then on. No, I have authorized the Justice Department to uh, have the FBI uh, cooperate with local authorities in trying to put an end to this violence. But we have always had a policy with regard to the user fee concept which governs most of our transportation, gasoline taxes and so forth, that there has been a proportionately higher uh, tax for the trucks, commercial trucks, based on the very fact that they not only uh, make a greater use and a commercial use than does the passenger automobile, they also represent a greater wear and tear on the highways. Now, the taxes originally proposed were sizably reduced before the bill was passed. And uh, these taxes, over and above the, the fuel tax, uh, are being phased in, as you pointed out, over the next couple of years. And actually, I think that it is proportionately fair that those taxes be paid. And like any other business tax, they have the opportunity to pass them on to the customer, which is what happens with business taxes. A business can't pay taxes. It's a cost of production. But the worst thing in the world, as I say, that we could do would be to let any group of citizens uh, say that they, that they could change the laws of this country by committing murder. Mr. President, you spoke of a spending freeze in your State of the Union message. Now that Congress has, has had a chance to go over the budget, the Democrats are saying it isn't so much a freeze. Uh, defense spending goes up, social spending comes down, and some services, such as legal services, would be abolished altogether. We, I said and made it plain, the overall total budget number was freed. Within that, uh, yes, there are some things that are increased. Uh, uh, given better, higher priorities. There are some things given lower priorities. But I believe that we have preserved the safety net as we've always said we would. And I think that it is about time, uh, since there have been, in spite of all the talk and the term, budget cuts, there have been no budget cuts. Each year, spending has gone up. And what we have cut are the projected budgets that were left for the next five years by the previous administration. And incidentally, with regard to defense going up, it might be well to point out that the increase in defense spending, we have more than cut in half the increase over the projected uh, Carter defense budget. Much more than half has been cut, and the increase since we've been here has only been about $3 billion a year over what he himself had proposed then. And he was down, uh, in his spending, he was down to 5% of gross national product for defense spending. In the 1960s, defense spending was 10% of gross national product. It was 9% or 8% in the 1970s. And by 1979, it brought it down to 5%. And we are holding it to 7%. <laughs> Honey, you were getting laughs. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mr. President. Happy birthday to you. How old are you? And two days early. <laughs> Aren't they Happy coming birthday. fast enough without <laughs> moving it up? Hold the candle out. Make a wish. Make a wish. Mm. <laughs> you, should, <laughs> you should know what I'm wishing. It's easy enough to guess, sir. It's easy enough to guess. <laughs> now. Now. See, you don't have to share that little one. Look what's there. <laughs> it's got football bladders in it, blown up. They no, it's explode. not. It's from me. No, I said the cake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it says, I love you, and it says, what more can I say? Happy birthday. And then it says, guess who? But she already just gave it away. <laughs> well... Thank you very much. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs>
Do you want to finish your statement about unemployment? <laughs> I think this ends the question. <laughs> I have to make the first cut. Make a wish. Make a wish. Again, a wish. Any wish you can tell us, Mr. President? You can't tell what you wish because then it won't come true. And you have to take the first piece. I have to take the first piece. I'll spoil my lunch. You have to take the first piece. I'd have cut a smaller if I'd have known that. <laughs> well, Mrs. Reagan, any uh, resolutions you wanted to make on his birthday? Anything you wanted to do differently? I think he's doing just fine. <laughs> well, maybe this would be a good time for you to tell him whether you think he should run again. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> You're not getting too old to run again, are you, sir? What? You're not getting too old to run again, are you, sir? How would you like a piece of cake, Sam? <laughs> huh? what, what kind is it? <laughs> did, did you bake it yourself? As a matter of fact, Sam, since she cut that one smaller, here, take mine and I'll trade. No, 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 no. that's bad luck. <laughs> you, do you feel up to six more years, Mr. President? I have learned not to argue with her superstitions. Yeah, give Sam and Chris a Here, so Chris, how about a piece of cake for you? <laughs> Maybe if I ask a question, I can get it. You're right. <laughs> but you understand we won't sell out for a piece of cake. <laughs> no deals. Oh, you sold out for less than that. <laughs> <laughs> I had to I assume that since the cake came in, came in, everything's off the record. Well, you're still on the <laughs> You were. Uh, we won't <laughs> tell the microphone. <laughs> as far as we know, they're still on. <laughs> I thought you were giving them to me. <laughs> well, how am I going to do this? <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any observations on your birthday, Mr. President? I mean, any, any, uh, any thoughts about the future? It's a softball question. <laughs> it is. Uh, oh. It's just the 31st anniversary of my 39th birthday, and uh, I'm enjoying every one of them. And I think that it's fine when you consider the alternative. <laughs> it's worse. <laughs> what kind of cake is this? I don't know. Apple well, you get, get everybody served back there. What? 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 What would I like? <laughs> You can tell us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never tell anybody. That's what I'd like is a trip to the ranch, really. That's what you're asking. What would I like? Yeah. yeah. But, uh, no, I could like a lot of things. I could wish for a lot of things, but I can't tell you what I wish for because then it won't come true. Nancy told me it wouldn't. <laughs> You've seen her about the cake. You I don't know how I'm going to get back get there. Going. You've got another meeting. Oh, Lord. <laughs> let him let him <laughs> finish his cake. Yeah. You, you should eat Larry, the cake. Let him make it. Let him make it. Oh, oh, Bernie, that was bad, Bernie. Was that bad? That's bad, bad, Bernie. Come on, sir. You missed it, maybe? Yes. OK, take two. They want to talk about the Russian cake. I've got another speech to make. So you can have that. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very well, much. How about it? Continue the. What were you talking about up here? Corporate income tax. <laughs> <laughs> any, any special yeah. thoughts about the next year, sir? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's going to be very much better. It's already started. This isn't bad cake. And I have confirmation from Alice Ribbon over at the CBO office on that. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you all. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Say it's delicious. Don't leave without it.